the group. We've got a big group today. This is this is the A team meeting of the Greater Pompano Beach Chamber of Commerce. And uh, although Lance told me to do our our normal introduction, this is actually a really special uh, meeting. Lance has done a lot of work. I'll give him credit for putting this together. Uh, we are here in South Florida and it is hurricane season. A lot of people haven't been through a hurricane before. A lot of people, it's been a while since we've, we've really seen, seen a hurricane in this area. So uh, this may be a refresher for some. It may be new information to some, but we're going to come back to that. We've got a lot of experts on, on hurricane preparedness that want to talk today uh, and, and give you information. We, we are the A-Team, which is a virtual uh, networking group from the Pompano Beach Chamber, the Greater Pompano Beach Chamber. We meet two Fridays a month. You can go on the Chamber website and register and uh, find out which days we're meeting and sign up for the meetings. Uh, we do pass a lot of business. We help each other. We do a lot of business together. And uh, we generally help the community. And one way we help the community is by making money because when we pass referrals to each other in the A-team, that money circulates 10 to 12 or more times through the economy. So uh, it really not only helps, uh, frankly, who gets the referral, but it also helps our community. So that's the A-team, that's what it's about. We've got a, a terrific panel of, uh, people from the chamber in various fields that uh, were put together today. In a minute, we're going to have a word from, from Jeannie McIntyre, uh, who leads the Greater Pompano Beach Chamber, and she's going to tell you a little bit about that. We're going to have uh, uh, Lance <laughs> Ellinger from Panther PC talk about uh, computers and electrical uh, issues. We're going to have uh, Jonathan Feldman and Andy Castor uh, talk about insurance issues. Uh, Wendy Gabriel, who's uh, with Triumph Public Adjusters, she's going to talk about uh, processing your claim and how to make sure you get uh, fully paid, a little bit about uh, damages. And John Guglielmi, Guglielmi and, and I don't know if I, did I get that right, John? John will correct me, but it's, from Chase Roofing. It's close, it's close enough. <laughs> okay, but he'll have his information in the chat. Everybody will have their information in the chat. You'll be able to email Lance if you need to get somebody's uh, information. You didn't get it, but John is with uh, Chase Roofing and Nicole McDermott is uh, has a lot of experience with uh, disasters and she's uh, CPR to go uh, and she's going to talk a lot. CPR to go training. She's, she's muted, CPR but we'll get back. Training to go. CPR training to go. CPR training to go. And that'll Thank be you. again in the chat. And uh, if you're watching this on a, a uh, recording, we'll try and get those into the uh, into the comments. So we got a big crowd here. I want to go back to Lance. He just talked a little bit about housekeeping, but uh, Lance, will you, we've got a couple more people go into that quickly okay. about the, uh, uh, okay. So we're going to run the meeting. So those of you that just joined us, so just some of the general guidelines. Uh, please mute yourself when you're not speaking. Please also uh, no eating while we're doing the, the meeting. Uh, certainly having a, a drink, uh, coffee, whatever is is fine. If you're having a cocktail, raise your fingers so we know you're having a, a cocktail uh, before the meeting. And we have the chat window, so please put your information in the chat. And depending uh, how full this gets, uh, we may either take questions from the chat or we may take them live. Just uh, as it gets fuller and fuller, it's, it makes it more difficult to take them live. So put them in there. And so I'm going to go now. I want to introduce Jeannie McIntyre. Jeannie is the president of the Greater Pompano Beach Margate Lighthouse Point Chamber of Commerce. And uh, we're thrilled that she's here. And Jeannie, over to you. Well, thank you. And uh, mm -hmm. I certainly appreciate everybody getting together and sharing their information. Um, we are, this is an enterprise group and everybody kind of gets to meet and do their own thing. And that's what this group has done. They pulled together this panel of experts and they're here presenting to you all this morning. Um, the chamber is actually um, 
part of the CERT, which is the state emergency response team. That means that as soon as a storm is imminent, I'm getting alerts throughout the day. Um, and if you have recalled in the past, I have shared those out to the membership as there has been any pertinent changes. Um, we also at that point update the chamber's website to include those announcements. And um, so we, we're, we're in tune with the most current information as well as being part of the city of Pompano Beach has a pretty robust emergency management response team. We have an emergency management uh, coordinator and I work closely with her. Um, in fact, I'm getting promised a tour of the hurricane center. So I'm excited about that. We'll, we'll see if that happens. Um, I have seen the hurricane plane, I have to tell you that. And that's a pretty cool thing that is parked at Fort Lauderdale Airport um, at National Jets when it's flying. Uh, so it, it's, a, it's an amazing process. It takes a lot of people. The other thing is I'm gonna put a website up because as those of us who have lived through a hurricane know, it's very much not about the actual disaster. It's about the length of recovery and all the things that happen afterwards. And there is an organization statewide called the Long-Term Recovery Coalition. And I am also part of that. And I get information regularly and updates from them. That is a group of municipal leaders all over the county, all their emergency response people, as well as a number of nonprofits and faith-based organizations for resources. So that website can be a great resource after, and I will put it in the chat for you all. Um, but I'm going to turn over the rest of the program to Mary Ann to update what's happening with the chamber. Uh, good morning, all. Uh, Mary Ann McCauley, Director of Member Services, Greater Pompano Beach Chamber of Commerce, serving Margate and Lighthouse Point. It's a pleasure to see everyone here, and we're going to get started. I'm just going to give you a few pertinent dates that are coming up. August 18th is our membership breakfast at Gallupi's. August 26th is our Shining Stars wonderful luncheon at the uh, Marriott on the beach. And September 30th is our 40th uh, golf tournament. So uh, if you need any information on those, just go online, let me know, uh, and uh, we will continue. I just want to uh, welcome Evencia. She's our newest ambassador from Comcast. So little hand for Evencia. And okay, let's get started with this huge program. All right, and as we get started, I just want to also give some accolades to uh, to the chamber and to uh, Jeannie and Marianne, and just mention. I think most of you I see on here are members. Uh, if you're not a member, maybe you want to check out the chamber and join. And I wanted to give uh, Jeannie credit because uh, we're talking about hurricanes here, but. Somebody may be actually watching this. We're in August of 2022, and somebody may be watching this recording down the road, and we've just been coming through a pandemic, and the Pompano Chamber has just done a phenomenal job. Jeannie's uh, had, had her probably her skills tested with the pandemic and, and, and twisting and turning and adapting and our chamber has really done a tremendous job in keeping people informed and having special programs to help businesses, uh, to really uh, help our community and help people stay in touch. As Jeannie says, she's getting that information even through, through whatever disasters or, or trials we're going through and she's keeping people informed. So if you know somebody that might be a candidate for membership or you're not a member, uh, you can certainly get in touch with Marianne. And, uh, and uh, it's really a, a great bargain for all you get for the, for the few bucks that memberships cost. So uh, with that said, I'm going to jump into my, my uh, uh, opening presentation. And I'm Rick Tobin. Uh, uh, my company is Premier Hotel Realty. I have lived in Florida. I was born here. My, my parents, uh, my father was born here. So I've, I've seen a couple hurricanes. I think I've been through every one. Uh, and, and what I wanted to talk about first is having a plan. So what's so important is that 
you have a plan and we're going to get you a lot of a lot of material also a lot of collateral that you can look at uh, afterwards but to have a plan for everything and to know it in advance so that when when any kind of disaster strikes you know what you're going to do you know how you're going to keep in touch with your family uh, you know if you're going to evacuate or not so you don't have to decide at the last minute uh, you know where your shelters are uh, if you have some compromised health issues you know where you're going to go you're pre-registered so you have room uh, if you have pets uh, you know what your plan is uh, how are you going to keep in touch with your family? How are you going to know where they are? Uh, where's, where are you going to meet up later? So there's so many things that you want to talk about with yourself, with your family. You want to plan so that you're not making those plans under stress. So uh, uh, please think about that. Please go through a lot of these documents afterwards. Take a look so you know what you're going to do, where you're going to go, how you're going to act, what your plan is. And we're going to go through uh, five, five or six different areas specifically with various experts. And uh, but there's also a lot more. So so go through those those items. Uh, know that you're going to get your batteries early. You're going to get your water early. Uh, what you're going to do, what you're going to take or maybe you're going to get out of the area. So uh, that's the. Uh, that's the initial plan, and that plan is going to change as things go. So uh, know that you might be, have to be flexible, that where you were going to go may be full. There may be some other issue there. Uh, also, if you have uh, neighbors, maybe elderly neighbors, maybe not elderly neighbors, uh, they may not have a plan. So uh, please uh, save room in your plans to be able to help people to uh, – uh, uh, give them some guidance. Also, uh, just one thing I left out is medications. If you have medications, make sure you have a stockpile of enough medication so that if stores and pharmacies are closed or if you're not able to get home, you can uh, you can uh, get to that that what you need. So with that, I'm going to uh, turn it over to Nicole, CPR training to go. And Nicole gave me actually a very extensive background of what she's done. And uh, because of time constraints, I'm not going to go into it. I'll let Nicole talk a little bit about uh, how she's been in, in, uh, in, in disaster situations and, uh, and, uh, and also has some special training about pets and taking care of pets. Nicole McDermott. Nicole, question. Do you want me to have you share the screen? Do you need to share your screen with the audience? No, 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 no that's okay. okay. Um, it's actually not not part of my skill set. <laughs> um, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Nicole, your friendly neighborhood chamber photographer. Uh, you guys know I also own a training agency called CPR Training to Go. I've been a CPR instructor for 32 years this year, I think, 31 years. I was an EMT for 10. I worked with disaster services at the Red Cross, and I um, I worked for them, actually, for the organization for 12 years in the middle. So... Um, and I also have been in Florida for 20 years, and I was here for the summer of the, the never-ending hurricane. Uh, for those of you who were not here, we had four one summer when my kids were very small, four. So um, the uh, Rick did mention a bunch of things for prep. There, there's two aspects to hurricane preparation, or I'm going to call it disruptive event preparation, right? Because it's not just hurricanes that we can prepare for, but anything else. Uh, FEMA makes headlines every year or two because their disaster plans include zombie apocalypse, but that's, of course, because they want you to pay attention to them. So, um, mine don't, <laughs> just to be clear. Uh, so, here's what we want to think about. We want to think about the worst possible time to prepare for a hurricane is when there's one spinning offshore. Okay, you want to think about these things sort of on an ongoing basis. Um, it has the effect of preparing you more thoroughly, but also preparing you without making you crazy. Uh, you know, the, all those people who show up and pull the milk and bread off the shelves in the last 12 seconds before everything shuts down, it, it's not worth it. You're, you're much better off having shelf-stable goods that you eat as part of your regular life. Uh, do not run out and buy 16 cans of lentil soup if you've never in your life tried lentil soup, because when you have nothing else available, it's a bad time to develop a taste for it. Um, 
so you want to have sort of an ongoing, it doesn't have to be vastly expensive. It's just buying a little bit extra to put away. The guidelines currently say, depending on if you check with FEMA or with the county, that you need anywhere between five and like 14 days of supplies if you're going to shelter at your home. Those supplies include food. And, and remember that if it is a hurricane, it's coming at us. It's not, it's not the number of calories that you're eating with your sedentary lifestyle. You'll be out there working. So you're going to want some extra food, some extra like uh, calorie rich um, stuff that you can eat along the way. Like this is a good time to put away some extra protein bars and that sort of thing. You're going to want real food as well. You're going to want some canned goods. You're going to want some shelf stable. I I'm gluten free. So I eat a lot of rice noodles. So I always have this sort of excessive number at home but they have the advantage of not requiring boiled water to soften. So you, or you can boil the water and then let them sit. It's not so energy intensive to cook them. Um, and you're going to want to start to rotate that. You don't want to put away hurricane supplies and, and then need them five or six years later and realize that you really don't want to eat tinned chicken that's that far out of date. So buy food that you're already eating. Make sure that you have it available to you. You need a gallon of water a day per person and that's only for drinking. So you're going to need a little more for like tooth washing and cooking, and you're going to need it for your pets as well. Particularly the dogs tend to go through an awful lot of water under stress. So a gallon of water per day per person and pet, you're going to make sure that you have adequate pet food. You're going to make sure that you have a manual can opener. I can't tell you how many people put away all this food and don't have a can opener that doesn't require power. Do remember that um, cell phone towers sometimes fail. If you still have a house phone, or as an eight-year-old in a class said to me one day, do you mean a hurricane phone? <laughs> if you still have a house phone, I need you to remember that if the base plugs into the wall, the house phone will not function if your power is out. Um, I went to, I had to go buy a house phone that didn't, that wouldn't fail when the power is out. And I wound up getting one that they sell to very senior people. The buttons are like this big, um, but it will not fail if my power is out and it won't fail if the, if the cell phone towers go down. Um, I'm a big fan of portable batteries for cell phones. They, they, you know, they come like this, you charge them up and then you can charge your phone from them twice. That's, that's a thing for me. I like emergency contact. It's really important that you have your, let's see, important documents backed up. The insurance folks are gonna talk about a lot of that for you. You want your documents backed up. You need a list of priority phone numbers, including your insurance agent your out-of-state family. Uh, I like to have one out-of-state family contact member, one local contact who knows my out-of-state contacts, written down in a hard copy in a waterproof bag on, your, you know, on or near your person or in your go bag of documents that you would take from the house in an emergency. My important paperwork is literally kept in one of those file boxes that's waterproof. Um, you know, it's just plastic dog down. And I do have some of them inside a Ziploc bag as well. Um, you're gonna want, if you're gonna stay around the house, you're gonna want, Things, oh, I'm sorry, before I move off food, when you're putting away food for a hurricane, when you're buying in the run-up to the hurricane, please don't forget the chocolate, okay? <laughs> you're going to be trapped in the house for a week. Uh, with, in my case, it was with my very small children. The chocolate was absolutely essential to getting through Hurricane Wilma when we had no power for five days. Please don't forget the chocolate or whatever your comfort food is. If it's Doritos, like, I won't judge you, but make sure that you have them on hand prior to. Um, you're going to need all the things that you need in Florida anyway, bug spray, hats, sunscreen, work gloves, um, duct tape, scissors, bleach, tool supplies, some dry clothes would be great, rain gear, extra deodorant, you may not be able to shower for a while. Um, those cell phones, some cash, a paper map of your area if you're new to it because your cell phone technology may fail you. Um, you're out of, like I said, you're out of area contacts. Rick already mentioned medication. If, if we're looking at a hurricane coming at the end of whatever your prescription cycle is, call your pharmacist. They might be able to issue you an extra five days prior to as if you had lost your, your bottle. Um, a first aid kit, uh, I can help you with that if you have questions. Um, a battery powered or a hand crank radio. These are not hard to come by, but they're sometimes hard to think of. Uh, I went into Brandsmart and asked for a radio that would play a CD and they laughed at me, the zygotes that were working there. Um, <laughs> so you, you can get, I know the American Red Cross is actually, they sell a hand crank radio. NPR gives one away with their annual uh, stuff. You're going to want to hand, you want, what you're looking for is a radio that can tune into NOAA channels. 
Um, I find it stressful to watch local news as these things are coming in because they tend to play them up and up and up. So I get my direct hurricane information from NOAA, which updates at 11 o'clock at 1 o'clock and they have, uh, I think, 4 updates a day. Um, I have a list. I, I did write all this stuff up for Lance and there's a link directly to the NOAA hurricane page in that list. Um, be aware when you're putting away food again for people like me, special allergies. You need flashlights, you need batteries. If you are like me and you have a hurricane box and we've had this lovely sort of lull for a few years, you're going to want to check your hurricane supplies, including your batteries, uh, to make sure that they're pretty good. I was shocked when I opened a, a bag of um, AAAs the other day and found them you know, corroded. You are going to want to make sure your documents of importance are in one place and Bleach. Oh, masks. If you're going to evacuate, you're going to need a mask and you're going to need your COVID cards for your for your vaccinations. Uh, if you're staying home, particularly, you're also going to need like um, propane for your grill. Fuel for your generator if you have one. And if you have a generator, then we recommend that you run it once a month uh, to keep the fluids moving. Use some gas stabilizer in it and in the gas that you put away for hurricane season and um, know how to attach it to your house because a lot of people don't that's a there's a certain i don't know how to attach i don't have one so there are, um if you are going to run a generator i'm not even going to insult you by not by telling you to not run it inside your home you all knew that right um but i will recommend that if you are going to run a generator on your property or if you live in a high rise that has an elevator and there's a generator to run the building make sure you have a carbon monoxide detector in your home along with your standard uh, excuse me, smoke detectors, because the carbon monoxide, you cannot smell, you cannot taste it, and it kills people every year. Uh, so if you're running a Jenny, if your windows are open, because it's probably not enough to run your air conditioning, um, you don't need the fumes drifting through your house and, and causing that sort of problem. Okay. Um, if you're going to evacuate, have an idea of where you're going. Uh, your pets need to be vaccinated. You need to have their vaccine cards. Uh, any pet medications also need to be kept up to date. You need your vet's information. Um, you need to know that most shelters do not take pets. There are pet friendly shelters, but you're gonna have to call the county or the state to find out where they are. I evacuated a couple years ago with three cats and a dog and was kind of shocked to realize that I had to go to Maryland to find a friend who was willing to put up with me, two kids, three cats and a dog. <laughs> So uh, that was a long trip, but uh, it was nice to know that I had a place to go. We did stop in Savannah for the night, but then we got evacuated from there too. So have your ducks in a row. That's that's the best thing. And then rotate, you know, rotate your food. The best time to prep for hurricanes is way before one starts off spinning off the coast. Keep your cars up to date. Keep your batteries up to date, and um, take a deep breath. It'll be all right. Excellent information, Nicole, and, and a ton of information for people. You, you can always get in touch with Nicole. Uh, you can tell she's got a lot more to say, uh, and, and a, there's a lot of information available. We can only do so much. Uh, one thing I do want to add, uh, uh, for Tim's guy's sake, who's uh, with FPNL, is when, when you hook up that generator, make sure you have an electrician that knows how to do it, that... Uh, uh, knows which way the power is supposed to run, so it doesn't it doesn't uh, uh, electrify lines that that the crew from FPNL may think are not are not uh, are not energized. So uh, know what you're doing with with all that because so many people get hurt after hurricanes. That's when they get hurt uh, because they they're they're in a, uh, doing things that they're not familiar with, operating chainsaws and the like. With that, we're going to jump over to Jonathan Feldman and Andy Castor to talk about insurance and, and planning is so important because when that and that hurricane's right out there, you're not going to be able to get a hold of your insurance agent. You're not going to be able to uh, to change your insurance. And I, I know that when you're buying property or selling property, often an issue. But Jonathan, why don't you uh, talk about and introduce Andy and uh, talk about some issues with insurance. Yeah. Uh, good morning, everybody. I'm Jonathan Feldman with Creative Financial Network. And uh, part of our group is under Creative Financial is Creative Financial Casualty. And Andy heads up that group. He is a wealth of information on hurricanes and property and casualty insurance in general. Um, 
I think what Nicole was my only contribution really is what Nicole was saying about keeping your know, knowing where your documents are and, and having them in case you need them and having them prepped is really key. But uh, aside from that, Andy, uh, welcome to the group. Thanks, Jonathan. I um, appreciate the opportunity to talk to you about something that I always say people don't want to talk about, but you need to talk about. So from an insurance standpoint, um, let me just say the first thing uh, in preparedness of a hurricane, guys, um, everybody has a smart camera. And what I always tell my clients is to um, take your smart camera and just videotape very slowly the contents of your home. Take, take a video of the whole interior. You don't have to spend a lot of time doing this, but you know, you have personal belongings and how do you prove that you have a couch or you have a certain type of a console in your house, whatever. Well, if you provide a video um, uh, recording of all the personal stuff, your personal belongings, et cetera, it's easier to assess risk after a hurricane, right? So that's the easiest way to prove what kind of contents you have in your house and in the event that it gets damaged and you have to get rid of it, at least you have a physical um, record of it and you can upload that to the cloud, uh, put it on a disk, put it on a thumb drive, whatever it is. That's the first thing. Um, the second thing is in light of the crisis that we have right now in insurance in general in Florida, and really it's the, the worst crisis we've ever seen in the history of insurance in Florida, um, roofs have become under scrutiny. And so primary thing that you're going to get hit with in a hurricane, typically speaking, is roof damage. So it is advised to probably get a roof inspection at least once a year. And then that way you have proof of, of you know, any issues that you have with the roof or non-issues. Therefore, after a hurricane, get somebody out there to assess your roof at that time so that if you do have damage, it's pretty easy to prove that it came from the storm. You actually have about three years to report a claim, but you, you know, the sooner you do it, the better off you have. So um, Lance, are you gonna share um, the- Yeah, you, the wind mitigation report? Yes, Andy. please. Because I would like to point something out to, to folks um, concerning the best way to get discounts on your insurance. And uh, there's a lot of confusion about this. The report that Lance is going to put up there is called a wind mitigation inspection. And whereas in the old days, you may or may not have needed this form, 99% of the time when you buy insurance, you are gonna need this form. And uh, this is a standard form. It could be produced by an inspector, a home, home inspector, et cetera. But there's some critical parts of this that you need to be uh, uh, aware of so that maybe you're not getting a discount on your current insurance that you should have. So this is actually one from my older home that I had. Uh, I don't know how well you guys can see this, but we'll go through it ra relatively quick quickly. But in the middle of the screen, you can stop right up. Let's go back up. Yeah. So right here, um, your roof, your roof replacement, the year that your roof was either replaced or put on your house is right here in this section. So in this in this realm, my, my even though my house was built in 02, you know, that roof may have been put on in 2000, it took two, maybe two years to build the house. Uh, there is a discount in Florida uh, called the Florida Building Code, FBC is the acronym. And uh, if, your, if your roof was put on after 1994 in um, uh, Broward County and, and, and some, and, and therefore, uh, or, or after 2000 uh, in um, uh, Tri-County. In any case, there's a big discount for the Florida Building Code. You'll see that in Section A underneath the roof permit information. Your roof deck, stop right there. That roof deck, 99% of all the roof decks use dimensional lumber, which is a level C. But if you have a level A or a level B, it will create a higher premium in your insurance. There's really not much you can do about this. However, you can do something about your roof and roof replacement is going to be critically important in the coming years. I can tell you insurance companies are heavily looking at that particular uh, year that your roof was put on and the age of your roof. Go ahead and scroll down, Lance. Okay, so this section right here, again, critically important. How the roof is attached to your home, again, is something that you can't control, but each one of these, you'll see my house had clips. This is a, the way that the roof is attached to the structure. Um, 
toenails will give you the least discount. Clips will give you a, a little bit more of a discount. Single wraps, and that's typically what we see in Florida, will give you an additional discount. Again, nothing you can really do about these things. There are ways to retrofit this. It could be quite expensive. I've never seen it really be uh, economically uh, advisable to, to up, upgrade those because it just it costs a lot of money, and I don't think the discount is as heavy. But as you go down to the roof geometry, uh, a hip roof is... Uh, the favored favorite flavor of insurance companies, they will give you a very steep discount if you have a hip roof. Again, nothing you can do about this. Your roof is your roof and you can't change the architectural structure of it. Uh, the secondary water resistance is an additional credit. And we don't see a lot of this with older construction, but newer construction does have a secondary water resistance. But you can't just tell the insurance company you've got it. It's got to be verified on this form. Uh, let's scroll down, Lance, because this is the most critical part of the wind mitigation, and that is your opening protection. And again, there seems to be a lot of confusion about this particular part of the wind mitigation. And as you can see in, in, in this particular one, my house was protected on um, all the windows, the front door, my my sliding doors in the back and my garage door if any one opening folks keep this in mind because i see this quite a bit people say well why are i not getting the wind credit when i have hurricane shutters and impacts you know on my windows and so forth well there may be a door and in particular a garage door that is not hurricane rated and typically speaking in the old days we used to see some partial credit if most of the windows were covered and maybe a garage door was not. Uh, right now, pretty much, uh, generally speaking, the only way you're going to get a, the windstorm credit is if every one of these boxes has hurricane protection, meaning rated hurricane protection, verifiable by the inspector, and what we call A1. And if you have an A1 level hurricane protection, you're going to get the most discount. The caveat here is in Palm Beach uh, and above uh, uh, above Palm, Be Bob Palm Beach, you can have an, a level A1, 2, or 3. And for the most part, most insurance companies will give you the wind mitigation discount. There are some companies that won't, but for the most part, well, I can tell you Citizens, which is getting most of the business now, which is the state-run program, will give you credit if you have A1, A2, or A3, if you're in Palm Beach. However, in Broward or Miami-Dade, it must be A1 in order to get the credit. So that's critically important. And let's just scroll down a little bit more. That's pretty much the wind mitigation report. Anything below an A1, you're not going to get a credit for. Um, the reason why I'm explaining this to you is because a lot of people have sent me wind mitigation credits and those uh, reports, and they'll say, uh, Andy, you know, I've got impact windows on the front of the house. I've got shutters or uh, corrugated, uh, you know, metal shutters on the front. Um, I got accordions over here, uh, et cetera. It really doesn't matter to an insurance company what you have. It's if it's rated, they call it a Miami-Dade uh, hurricane rating approval. If it's got a sticker, if it's got an etching on there uh, and that can be verified, you get the same credit irrespective of whether you have a window, uh, a shutter or, or, or whatever. But those are the areas that you need to look at on your wind mitigation because a lot of times people replace a roof and they forget to tell the insurance company. And uh, in order to get that particular credit, you need to redo your wind mitigation. The roof is critically important. The reason why windows need to be covered and doors need to be rated is because your windows may all have hurricane shutters on them. Your front door may be impact rated, but your garage door is not. And the insurance company's uh, biggest um, issue, uh, their, their biggest concern is that there'll be a breach from wind into any opening of the house. Because if you lose your garage door, it creates the internal pressure and your roof's gonna probably blow off or, or could be compromised. So as long as you can keep windows from blowing in, doors from blowing in, uh, in all likelihood, your house will survive a, a pretty severe thunderstorm, albeit you may lose tiles on the roof or you may lose part of your roof. But for the most part, I've been 
I've been living in here, uh, living in Florida since 94. We've been through a bunch of uh, hurricanes and I mean, I've only lost roof tiles uh, in, in the worst of them. So uh, keeping those windows covered is critically important. After a hurricane, you need to assess your damage as quickly as you can. And um, that's where, you know, that's where, uh, you know, hiring a, an engineer or somebody to take a look at your roof. If you know you have damage, you are, as a homeowner, it is incumbent upon you to mitigate that damage as best you can, cover any window that's broken, maybe tarp the roof if, if you've got a leak, whatever you can do to stop damage from happening uh, does uh, is important and it does state that in your insurance policy that you are uh, that, that you need to do that so uh, we're going to get into that in a minute John. Yeah, uh, yeah and i would hand that off and say listen at that point you may want to consider hiring an adjuster an attorney whatever that is adjusters can be your best friend and um finally i would just say that um roofs again i'm, I'm emphasizing this critically important Insurance companies are going to start mandating that roofs can't be, uh, you know, as old as they are right now when you have your replacement done. And there'll be uh, all sorts of uh, depreciation schedules probably put into your insurance policies. Uh, right now, like I said, we're just in a really hard market. So do whatever you can to uh, shore up your house. And uh, that way you don't have to worry about any damage happening from a hurricane. Yeah, we're we're going to uh, get into the roofs also in a few minutes. But uh, thank you, Andy. As uh, anybody watching this can see, he just had really one document, and there's so many documents. And I can tell you, as a uh, I bought two houses and 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 my lifetime, and got hit by hurricanes within about two weeks of buying each one. And when you're on a ladder trying to figure out how to put up your hurricane shutters and what you need to do in this new property. It's not a good time to have your insurance policy in the other hand and try and figure that out. Yeah. So take a look at your insurance policy, uh, understand it, maybe have an expert, maybe go over that with your agent or with an adjuster and see if there's changes that you need to make or, or, uh, or adjustments. And, and also it's not all about insurance because you know, Andy talked about the cost versus the credit you're going to get. And if you have an opening and your house is destroyed and you didn't didn't uh, didn't secure that because you weren't saving enough on insurance, uh, that's a bad decision. And, and you, you'll come to regret it later uh, because the best thing to do is not have an insurance claim. Uh, so so you don't have to live through that. That's great. But. With that, uh, these policies can be very complicated, can be very uh, uh, difficult to understand. And, and frankly, if you read them beforehand, you don't know what's, what's gonna happen. So uh, it's really important. Uh, Wendy Gabriel is a, uh, a public adjuster who works for, uh, works for the homeowner and uh, tell, helps them get what they deserve, get paid for their compensated for their their damages and uh, people in her company. And she knows how to look at these policies as well, because they're looking at them afterwards. But uh, with that, let me turn it over to Wendy Gabriel from Triumph, uh, Triumph uh, Public Adjusters. Thank you, Rick. Um, so my name is Wendy Gabriel. I'm with Triumph Consulting Corp. I've been with Sean Murray, the owner of Triumph, for 10 years out of the 15. We just had a 15-year mark. Um, and so I'll go into uh, just some of the things I wanted to start by reiterating, you know, what Andy said. Make sure you have and take your smartphone out. Get photos, videos. If you know a drone operator, get them to maybe take a drone footage of your roof just so you have some kind of proof as to what your condition of your roof is before you have an impact of from a tropical storm or hurricane. Um, get a home inspector out there to do that for uh, the mitigation report. So you have it reported to your insurance company what your life expectancy of your roof is when he, the home inspector was out there taking a look at it. Um, so that was one of my first points. Uh, second point, again, something that Andy mentioned, always having a copy of your policy or any other important documents in a sealed waterproof bag. Uh, one of those 
important documents would most definitely be your homeowner's policy or your flood policy. Um, the next uh, section I was gonna talk about was how and when to file a claim. You know, when you file a claim and let's say you're a homeowner and you don't know how to navigate a claim, if you just uh, report the claim as water damage versus hurricane damage, they could flat out deny it right away. Um, so you need to know how to navigate that. Um, you also need to make sure you're listing the correct date of loss. If you don't have the correct date of loss, they will flat out deny it. Um, so this is where I come into play. When you get damaged, I always recommend you hire a licensed public adjuster or a professional of some sort, whether it's me or a licensed, uh, you know, first party property attorney, if you know any, but you definitely want someone on your corner to fight on your behalf for the big insurance company. Rolling into the insurance company, getting into that section, um, Andy mentioned there's a crisis in Florida with going on where the times are changing with insurance companies. Um, I Not only am I a member for the Greater Pompano Beach um, you know, Chamber of Commerce, uh, I'm actually an active member of board of directors for FAPIA, which is Florida Association of Public Insurance Adjusters. And we are closely watching what's going on with the legislation. And I just wanted to bring up three points. They um, just shortened the length of being able to file a claim from three years to two years, which is one of the things that passed in the legislation. So making sure you report timely on hurricane damage you may have sustained is gonna be important. Not only that, uh, the life expectancy of what your insurance company is looking for is only supposed to be up good up to 15 years now versus, and they were actually shooting for 10 years, but they compromised and went to 15 years. So you're gonna see a lot of insurance companies going out there and doing new inspections and contacting you and saying, I need to come out and take a look at your home. Uh, so that's gonna come into play later on. Um, and lastly, I was gonna roll into you know, not only is it in a responsibility of the insurance company to handle in a timely manner and properly your claim, but it's a responsibility of the homeowner within the policy that you mitigate any damages your home sustains. And that's where I was going to roll into because we have John with Chase Roofing. He would have tarps available and you would want to reach out to them. If you have damage right away, you want to get that mitigated as soon as possible because it's your responsibility to make sure no other firm further damage comes to your roof. And that was my section that I was going to cover. All right. Fantastic information, Wendy. Thanks so much. And she's going to put her information or she may already have in the chat oh, yeah. because if you have not only hurricane damage, but they handle... Uh, water damage, floods, fires, all kinds of things. I've known uh, Sean, uh, the owner of her company, for probably 10, 15 years, maybe. And so he's he's got a lot of experience. Uh, with that, what's so important, we've been talking about uh, a little bit about electricity, and uh, we're all on Zoom here doing this. And, and uh, when your power goes out, when your computer goes out, when your hard drive crashes or gets damaged, uh, you want to know the information that Lance Hellinger from Panther PC is about to give you and know how to prepare in advance and know uh, what to do afterwards. Lance, you want to take it away? Okay, Rick, uh, we're going to give it to John next here and I'm last. Okay. So John is uh, from uh, Chase Roofing and John, I'm going to give it to you. I have a whole bunch of slides. Can you see the, my screen? Yeah, uh, this is perfect. Okay. Thank you, so John, I appreciate it. It's you, and then you can just tell me to advance. Great. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, my name is John Guglielmi. I'm with uh, Chase Roofing. Uh, and uh, Chase Roofing has been in business for over uh, 20 years, uh, helping people through these uh, challenging times of hurricanes, windstorms, uh, and the like. Uh, so a couple things that I wanted to touch on um, that 
we can kind of uh, correct before a storm and things that we need to do during and after. So, um, you know, this picture I have right here uh, is the importance of uh, cleaning your gutters. Uh, a lot of people don't think about it, but when you do have gutters on your home and they're loaded up with leaves and debris, uh, the water isn't draining out properly. Uh, you know, you can get water back up. And then also, if you notice on this picture too, the gutters are not attached to the home properly. So securing the gutters or any other items uh, to your home are imperative. Uh, the wind can grab those items, rip them off and cause uh, further damage. So this is like another picture too of what a lot of homes look like. And some people don't even pay attention to this. So, you know, it's really important that you do look up and, you know, see what's on your roof. Uh, so that you can correct uh, and clean out uh, any of those areas that can cause uh, any problems during a hurricane. And also um, at other times when there's not a hurricane, it's just, uh, it's always a good idea to keep those areas clean. Um, also, uh, trimming trees. Uh, a lot of people have trees hanging over their homes uh, and it's a good idea to trim tree branches. Um, ideally, you wanna have everything at least a foot away from the house. Uh, and, you know, trimming trees uh, cause the most damage during a hurricane, and you always want to trim them back. Uh, not only is it, is it good for your home, but for your neighbor's homes. You know, you want to think about, you know, what's going to happen to your neighbor's house if that branch goes crashing down onto the roof or onto their property. Uh, then we have the, you know, we're talking about securing items, screen enclosures. Uh, screen enclosures are, are a big thing also. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I go to a home and I see this in the picture where the screens are loose, uh, they're hanging there and the structure itself is just not stable. So now is the time to really make sure, you know, have a screen enclosure company uh, come out to, um, you know, assess what needs to be done to make sure that that screen enclosure is gonna make it through a hurricane. Um, uh, loose roof tiles, loose shingles. Uh, you see in this picture here, the wind can just grab that roof tile and, and rip it right off the roof. So now is the time before a hurricane to have a roofing contractor come out, inspect the roof, make sure that all the tile, all the shingles, uh, metal roof systems are all attached securely uh, to your roof so that you don't have to worry about these items uh, flying off of the roof. And here's a picture of shingles where they're just hanging there. And this you see all the time. If you were to drive down a street that has a shingle roof on it, you will see these loose shingles. Uh, so it's, it's very important to make sure that those are secure. Uh, tarps. Uh, so tarps are super important to have on hand. Um, we can provide and install the tarps for you um, to you know, remediate any uh, leaks until you can get a full repair or replacement of the roof. Uh, but it's important to make sure you securely attach those tarps to your house with either sandbags or one by two uh, wood strips uh, and or both. Um, so if you're able to do it yourself, that's great. If not, uh, you know, we can come out and install those tarps for you. Or, you know, if you have a relationship with other roofers, they can do the same thing for you. Uh, the hurricane panels. Uh, it, the time to check your hurricane panels is not like a week before a hurricane. I would check those consistently throughout the year, uh, especially with accordion shutters. So accordion shutters, what, a good idea is to open and close your accordion shutters once a month and lubricate them to make sure that they're working properly uh, with the panels. Make sure you know where they are. Make sure you have all the little screw heads so that when you're ready to put them up, you, you, you have a proper way of, uh, of attaching uh, the panels. Um, and then also the, uh, as far as having a relationship with a roofer, uh, it's super important to have a relationship with a roofing contractor. So, you know, with, uh, with us, we have, we, we are, we're blessed to have great clients, uh, when they reach out to us, we're always there for them. So it's good, you know, it's good to know roofing contractors so that when you do have a situation, you know, you can call them and they can come out on a timely basis to take care of any of your needs. And that's all I have. Okay. All right. I would just I would just like to add one thing. John's uh, sister company, Shine, they will come and put your hurricane shutters up for you, and yes. that was great for me to find out because I have to pay my gardener every time to put them up around the house. So Shine puts up the hurricane shutters. 
and, and also we can uh, try and we'll also be able to clean out your gutters uh, and take care of that debris situation for you too. Excellent. You. Excellent information. And, and frankly, those tarps aren't just for roofs. You may need them inside for your uh, computers, for your TVs, for other things that exactly. uh, if you do have a, uh, a, a breach. So with that, let's talk a little bit. Lance, you ready to talk about some technology? Yeah. Yeah. So let me uh, just get this. You can still see my uh, screen here. So I'm, I'm going to cover uh, two areas. One is general power uh, things. And it's nice that Timothy Bryan is on. Uh, I don't think I met Timothy before. It's nice to know that we have an FPL person on here. Uh, so just general things about what do you do ahead of time and during the storm in terms of general power protection for your house. And we'll touch base, uh, I think Nicole talks a little bit on the generators. And we'll talk about protecting your technology, your computers, your, your uh, printers, and those types of things like that. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is get to this one here, which is the Hurricane 2020. Here it is. Okay, so let me get this here. All right, so this, this is an article that came from the Tampa Bay Times back uh, a couple of years ago, just in terms of uh, uh, you know what to do. Um, okay, so we're we're on the uh, we're on the the technology side, but I think most of you know that uh, you know computers don't like water. Uh, they don't like electricity going up and down, um, and and lights flickering and all those types of things. So uh, you want to uh, be prepared. I think most of you probably know about surge protectors. All right, or um, or the battery backups, right? So uh, bring this up here and see if I can get this over here. I've got so many windows open here. Let's see if I can, ah, here we go. All right, well, maybe, ah, okay, here we go. All right, so uh, I think all of you know about surge strips here. You use them for your home, you use them in your office. These, these guys protect against voltage spikes. All right, here, we're, we're in the lightning state capital of, of the world, right, Florida, and uh, electronics don't like lightning. They don't like voltages going up to 300, 500 or more volts. So you need to protect your sensitive equipment uh, with uh, either a surge strip or a battery backup. Uh, now, if lightning is hitting everywhere around your house, I would recommend you turn off all your equipment and disconnect it. If it's that close, even these things, are, you're not going to protect you if a bolt hits your house. All right. But certainly the better things for computers, particularly desktop computers, are the battery backups that you see in the bottom of the picture. And these things both provide surge protection as well as battery protection to keep the voltage at a good level so you could... Uh, be protected against drops in the voltage. Those are called brownouts. Uh, again, computers don't like those things, particularly with computers with spinning hard drives. They do not like drops in voltage. So there's different price levels of these things. You can see the there's a $76, $60 one. This is your basic battery backup. Uh, this uh, keeps the thing running if, if you have drops in the power. Uh, but it doesn't keep the voltage at a really steady level. It could fluctuate a little bit. The more expensive ones, like you see at the bottom, have automatic voltage regulators. Those keep the voltage nice and steady. Whatever, make sure you, your desktops are on a battery backup. Your laptops already have a battery in them, so you just need the surge protection uh, for that. If you have a storm and the power starts to flicker, the best recommendation is unplug your electronic equipment, unplug your printers, unplug your computers. If you have a laptop and it runs on batteries, you can use it. But again, your, your internet is going to be connected to the uh, house, both on AC voltage and it's going to be a wire coming in. So if things are going bad outside, you might want to think about disconnecting your modem or, or turning those things off. Uh, if you have Battery backup surge protectors, you can turn those off. Uh, the other thing is that um, uh, if you're going to be in an area where 
you're either flood prone or the roof might leak, you're going to want to cover the materials. We've seen this at businesses a lot because you're not at the business during a hurricane is if the roof could leak or water could get in, you better take, take the equipment off the ground, don't leave it on the floor, raise it up and cover it. You know, usually we use uh, plastic garbage bags, et cetera. You don't want to come in afterwards and find out that the thing has, has been damaged with water. Uh, printers, those types of equipment as well. You know, the other thing is, uh, I think Adam mentioned, maybe in Nicole, uh, uh, Andy mentioned, Nicole mentioned, take pictures of your equipment, guys. Uh, know what your inventory is of your electronic equipment. That means your televisions, your uh, computers, uh, you know, any other expensive equipment you have, printers, et cetera. Uh, please um, take pictures of those. So if there's damage, you have those on hand, okay? Um, let me just go over here, because I know we're getting to nine o'clock here. I want to get over to, uh, okay, got to pull this down here. Um, okay, so this is, uh, let's just talk about power in your home. Um, these are some things from Generac, but uh, I think, uh, most of us know that if power starts to flicker, uh, appliances in the house don't like that, all right? Refrigerators don't like that. Air conditioners don't like that. You know, so if you have a storm and you start seeing a lot of power problems, you're probably going to want to turn off the circuit breakers for those types of appliances so that, you know, you, you probably don't want to be running your dryer when the wind is blowing, trees are knocking down around your house. Uh, the refrigerator, you probably want to keep it, but if it gets really bad, you might think of temporarily unplugging it, all right? Televisions are not quite as sensitive, but and we'd like to do the news, but probably the, the radio is better. Your house air conditioner, we want to keep it on, but if the power is going up and down, it could trip the breaker anyway. And uh, uh, so be careful of that. Uh, you know, if you have questions, you can uh, tune in. Uh, I'm going to send you out after the meeting. We have lots of documentation with links. We'll get that to you. All right. Uh, let's talk about power for a second. Any of you might have relatives that have medical equipment, breathing equipment, uh, or oxygen or other things like that. What if the power goes out? How are they going to run these things? So uh, there's a couple of ways you can run it. You can get a uh, like a portable backup. So I'm going to show you a picture of this here. Uh, so this is, um, I can get this over here. So this is one of the real popular, a uh, bestseller on Amazon. This is a portable battery pack. Uh, you know, it has 240 watt hours. This is plenty. You can't run your home air conditioning, your refrigerator. You can run some lights and fans, but beware of people that need electricity during a storm. That if the electricity goes out, what are they going to do to breathe or what other things they need? You're going to need some backup supply. Now, this is the easiest thing, particularly for in-house. Now, some of you may have home generators where your whole house can run on it. I happen to have a, a gasoline propane power generator. Can I see any hands here? Who has some type of battery backup for their house? Okay. And how many of you have like a portable generator instead of a home generator? Okay. Some of you. So uh, we touched upon this a little bit about uh, the, the portable generators, you've got to keep them long distance from home, recommended at least 25 feet. Do not run them in the garage. Uh, make sure you have a car, Andy smiling, right? Because people do this every year you read about people in Texas. When Texas two years ago lost their electricity in the winter, do you know how many people died of carbon monoxide poisoning? A lot, all right? Keep it away, all right? You've got to keep it covered. If you plug it in, you can't just plug it into... Uh, the, the circuit breakers of the house that has to be done by an electrician ahead of time. So you can throw a switch. I have a switch I could throw that changes it from the house electricity to the generator. Otherwise, you just have to run extension cords. All right. So just be aware of that type of safety. I'm going to stop here because we're running a little bit late. Certainly, I would be happy to answer any questions in chat or after the fact. We are going to send you out copies of a lot of this material. And so, Rick, I'm going to turn it back to you here. So, again, great information. There, there is a lot more that, that people need to know. If you have boats, uh, electric, we could do a whole program with uh, people from FPL. Uh, I see a lot of other experts uh, in Rick, various fields. 
Yes, Mr. please. Jeannie, can I just jump in because um, we did have our chair on this call with us, Jeff Wolf from the Vice Pre Senior Vice President, Seacoast Bank. So I just wanted to give Jeff a shout out and thank him for joining us. Excellent. And I, I was going to also say, uh, you know, again, we have all these experts and, and point out, Jeff, not only our chair, but a banker. And frankly, you know, after a storm, uh, one thing we didn't mention is having cash around. And uh, the banks are, are closed too. Uh, the ATMs may not be working. And your credit cards, if you need to go out to a restaurant or get something, that may not be working. So uh, having a stash of cash is, is important as well. And, uh, you know, uh, I've been in that position. Uh, I've re had to replace roofs and protect roofs. And frankly, labor right now is short for everybody anyway. Uh, so if you have cash, it's a lot easier to get people to do work. If you need somebody to put a tarp up or um, <laughs> something like that, that's, uh, that's so important. So, uh, uh, know your banker, talk to your banker, you know, if you need to get some kind of credit line available, that may be important. Uh, so, so there's so many other fields that we didn't have time to, to touch on. We, and I think every one of these experts could have gone on for, for probably half a day on, on their field. So uh, it's just so important. And I, I thank uh, Lance for all the work he did putting this together and, uh, and the chamber for, uh, for giving us a forum to, to do this. We encourage you to check out the A-team meetings uh, and, and attend and network. Usually we're we're talking about each other's businesses a lot more than we thought was an important topic. Uh, if you have people that want to join again, please uh, get them in touch and connect them. And uh, 